So it's been a mixed week for markets this week. We've had better data than the US, and as you can see from this chart, the economic surprise chart, that we've seen improvement there and expectations for Q2 GDP are improving, and therefore the likelihood of a rate rise is increasing. We also saw a very interesting change of tack from uh, Abe and the Japanese government deferring the sales tax rise um, that they were going to implement. This suggests a shift from monetary policy and negative interest rates to um, looking at a uh, fiscal boost to the economy uh, and therefore we saw a drop in uh, the Nikkei as the yen strengthened and here you can see that 2% relative underperformance the Nikkei against the MSCI world against uh, an appreciation of the Japanese yen on a trade weighted basis. We also had the OPEC cartel meeting, no changes, it was less fractious. Um, I think our base case remains that OPEC nations have, many of them articulated an, uh, a wish to lift production. They have an economic need to lift production. The week ahead is quiet. Um, as you can see, nothing of, of major note on Monday or Tuesday. And there you can see Sainsbury's as a, as a major on Wednesday, probably the, the, the biggest name uh, in, in the week for us. Going back to other news this week, we saw the Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund make a 3.5 billion investment in Uber, the ride-sharing app that's in 52 countries, 244 cities. This is the biggest ever private company investment. This follows Apple's $1 billion investment in Didi Taxi, which is a, a business that's in 300 Chinese cities with 100 million users, over a million drivers. Uh, and doing more than 5.2 million trips at peak time, so significant business. Both of these investments are investments in shared mobility, uh, and I think you know, this is a really interesting topic that we need to be aware of and factoring into our investment decisions, because it's going to be a very big market. The, the main thesis behind this is that you have a billion cars uh, in the global installed fleet uh, at the moment with a value, an aggregate value of around $20 trillion. Now, they're used on average one hour per day, which is a 4% utilization rate. If you raise that utilization rate to 20%, you could have half of that fleet in operation um, and you could travel twice the distance that the current fleet is traveling. So, Clearly, there's a very big opportunity for reducing the amount of cars and doing it in a different way to create value. That's disruption. That's going to shift the profit pool from one area of traditional manufacturing to a different area of those people who can tap into this shared mobility economy. So our question is whether Apple is a way to play this shared mobility given their DD investment. The share price would suggest not. As you can see here, the Apple share price has derated significantly over the last two years. But also that's been at the time where R&D has picked up significantly for Apple. And Apple over the last three years has spent around $5 billion on products that have yet to be launched. That's big in comparison to everyone, but also big relatively because they spent $2 billion ahead of the iPhone launch and $1 billion ahead of the Apple Watch launch. So one has to wonder whether you know, this Apple investment, which is around 20 times what the OEMs have been spending in share mobility, will create uh, value for the company. And what is the revenue opportunity? Well, the revenue opportunity is you know, in, in numbers that are out in the market around three and a half times the revenue opportunity in smartphone. So um, you know, the, the assumption that there are 20 trillion miles driven every year. You put a value of 50 cents on, on that and shared mobility is around the 25% market share uh, uh, by 2030 um, gives you a very big market to go at. So our question is whether Apple on eight times X cash um, is a good way to um, play this when clearly that share price is reflecting no expectation of revenue growing or EPS growing. Thanks very much.